Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm gonna go over the new Mocha Vegas plugin inside Vegas Pro 21. All right, so let's hop into Vegas Pro 21. Uh, once we have the program loaded, I'm gonna go to my Hub Explorer and drop a piece of media that I downloaded from Vegas content on my timeline. I'm gonna go ahead and trim it up to a 10 second gap so it's easy to work with. And the footage I'm using is a drone circular shot of a house, providing plenty of nice points to track. I'm gonna go to my plugins, drag and drop Mocha Vegas onto the clip. I'm gonna drop down the trees so you can see what all we have, and then I'm gonna say launch Mocha UI. This is gonna launch Mocha itself, and then I'm going to scrub through it and take a look at my clip. You can choose different modes of Mocha. By default, it's on the essential view, but you can choose the classic big picture or roto if those are what you're more comfortable using. So I'm gonna go ahead and track this center hexagon on top of this roof, try to find a very centered shot where I can see all of the points very easily. Once you find your spot, then you're gonna go ahead and choose how you wanna start your mask. At the top, I'm gonna to choose the X spline tool, which allows me to click and create pinpoints for custom shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark all six corners where I want my track to take place. Now the points you're choosing are important for masking. So if you are tracking a shape to mask it, these points are gonna be very important and I'll show you in a little bit why. Once you're done selecting all your points, you can right click and that'll exit out of the point selection. Now you'll notice that each of these corners is pretty rounded off. You can sharpen them up by pulling the little arms on every one of the corners inward or outward. If you pull them outward, it'll sharpen the points. If you push them inward, it will round it even more. So that looks pretty good to me. And now for good practice, let's go ahead and name the layer. Down in the track motion options, we can choose between transition, scale, rotate, skew, or perspective. In order to get a good planar track, you want to make sure all of them are selected, including perspective. Now right under that, we can see track forward, stop, or track backwards. It doesn't matter which way you start, so I'm going to go ahead and choose forward, and you can see that it starts tracking it frame by frame. Now, multi-point tracking like this can take a little bit of time and GPU power to track. I'm currently using my new Intel NUC with an ARC graphics card inside of it. So you can see it's taking a pretty decent amount of time, but it's not going too terribly slow either. The ARC 730M, I believe, is equivalent to about an RTX 3060. So this is kind of the realm of what you'll be seeing if you're tracking using multi-point tracking inside Mocha. That's GPU accelerated. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the end of the track. And once the track is done, we can see that it did a really good job of keeping all those points in a relative 3D space. Now, the next part that's very important is at the bottom left or the top left, there's the show surface button. And when you select that, it's going to bring a new square into your frame. That square is very important for tracking data because when you export tracking data, it's going to be using those four points, the top left corner, top right corner, bottom left corner, and bottom right corner. It's going to use that data to apply it to different things inside Vegas, like pictures or text. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drag each one of these corners out pretty far because I'd rather have a wider square area to work with than not wide enough. And I'll show you what I mean later on in this video. So once I got all four of those corners dragged out to where I want, those points will be locked in place to the track you made, keeping the perspective. So scrubbing through the footage, you could see that that looks really good. Next, I'm going to add a new point, and this one's just gonna be a single point track right here. So I'm just gonna choose this circle tool and draw a circle around this little chimney pipe right here. Once I do that, then I'm gonna uncheck everything except transition, because all I wanna know are the transition points for this. I don't want it to change the scale, rotate, or skew, or anything, because I'm only gonna lock text to this point. So we're gonna go ahead and hit track backwards just because it's pretty much right in the middle. And if you look up at the top right, you'll notice that it's tracking the point, but it's also retracking the roof. I don't want that to happen because that's double tracking and I already like what my roof is doing. So if you hide the layer and continue tracking, you'll realize that it's still tracking both of those points. So in order to stop that, you want to make sure you lock the layer and then start tracking. And then it's only gonna be tracking the point that you want. And you can see single point tracking without perspective, skew, rotation, or scale is much faster. So once that track's done, then I'm gonna go ahead and go to my starting point of the track and track forward to complete the track for the entire duration of the clip. Once I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and rename it to spot just so I can differentiate the layers. And then I can unlock the layer and go ahead and hit save at the top left. And that saves all of the tracking information into this Mocha Vegas plugin instance. 
Now in this plugin, we have a mat tree, and if you go to the mat, you can check that box and view the mat of what's tracked. You can also apply the mat, and then you can visibly see how this track is affecting your clip. I went ahead and inverted the mat as well, because if you didn't invert it, then everything outside of what you tracked would be black, except for the thing that you tracked. You can view or hide the visible layers that it's reading from what you tracked in the layer controls. And then you can also feather them both at the same time. You can also change what type of layers you wanna see in this drop down menu. Next, we have a create mask button. And what that does is transfer all of your tracking data to Bezier masking. Now, depending on how many tracks you did inside the Mocha plugin, that's how many masks will be put inside the masking tool. So when you export to the Bezier masking, you have a lot more control to adjust these individual masks rather than through the Mocha Vegas plugin itself. You can feather each one independently. You can change the opacity. You can change the shape a little bit. You can do all sorts of things with the Bezier mask effect. Now, if you didn't want to create a mask with any of this tracking data, that's totally fine. I'm going to go ahead and delete this Bezier masking effect off of my clips effects chain and then check these boxes to view the mat. Now there is a pre-multiply output button and by default that's on auto, which essentially is on, or you could turn it off and that will not show your tracked masks or mats. Now under here we have a create track data button, which is pretty important. When you select that, it'll pop up a window saying, which tracking data do you wanna import? And I'm gonna go ahead and choose the spot for this one because this is where I'm going to link text to that chimney spot. It automatically imports all that data and then they have an invert button if you wanted to reverse that tracking data for any unique situation. But I'm gonna leave that unchecked for now, then go to my timeline, create a new video track, and then insert some text media. Now you cannot apply tracking data to legacy text, you have to use the text media generator, the newer one. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this text and just call it text, why not? Now, one important thing to know is that this text media that I entered into the timeline has only a duration of five seconds, and my tracking data exceeds that. So what you need to make sure you do is extend the duration of your text media to match the length of the clip that you tracked if you want your track to be accurate and not glitchy. So I'm gonna change my five seconds to 10 seconds, and that will allow all the track data to go seamlessly through the entire text without repeating itself or looping. Now you can hit the apply export button and that'll load up the motion tracking plugin automatically that Vegas has. It chooses the one mask that it sees, which is Mocha, and you can't change any of the other options. Now in order to apply it, you can do it one of two ways. You can click the drop down arrow and then hover your mouse over the media that you want to use and then it'll give you the options of how it can apply the data. For this example, I'm gonna only use location, which is going to be locking it to a point. Once I've done that, all the tracking data gets applied to my text media. Next, you can open the pan and crop and reposition the text where you want to go. But an important note is that you shouldn't shrink the scale of your text inside the pan and crop tool because that will adjust where your track is. If you do wanna shrink the text, you need to go into your media generator options and then drop down the trees and shrink the scale with that little toggle. That will retain your tracking information and keep your text locked onto where it needs to go. Then go back to the pan and crop and adjust the position. You don't wanna adjust the location, the up, down, left, or right inside the media generator tool. You wanna to use the pan and crop for that. And you don't wanna adjust the scale inside the pan and crop. You wanna use media generator for that. Little mistakes that are easy to make, but I've made them, so I wanted to let you know so you don't have to make them. Once you do that, you get a perfect locked track right there. Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and close these and then drag and drop a Scrap Your Films logo, transparent logo, onto my timeline. I'm going to extend the clip to go ahead and match the length of the tracked video. Next, I'm going to open back up the effects chain of the tracked video, go down to my Create Track Data, select it, and then choose the Roof Data. Hit OK, and it's going to overwrite all of the track data in the timeline that existed before it. Then I'm going to hit Apply Export. It loads back up the motion tracking plugin, and we can apply the tracking data to the picture. Now, instead of hovering your mouse over the arrow, you can click and hold that little arrow with a target on it and drag it over the piece of media you want to apply this to. When you let go, it'll show you all the options that you can choose depending on that media and track data. The only options I have to choose are add picture and picture effects. So I'm gonna select that and it's gonna add the picture and picture effect to that logo, but it's going to apply the top left, top right, bottom left and bottom right points that we made sure to select accurately to that picture and picture effect. 
And if you did it correctly, you're gonna create a really nice, perfect planar track. Now, one thing you wanna make sure you do when you're applying planar track to pictures like this is that the aspect ratio is never lined up properly. So you need to go into the pan and crop options, go under the source, and then where it says maintained aspect ratio, turn that to no. And now if you deselect the lock aspect ratio button, then you can drag up and down, left and right, and that will shrink and expand your text. Now, if I zoom it in really far, you'll see that the picture does not exceed the four corners that I chose inside Mocha, which is why I made sure that that square was pretty big. So I can go ahead and shrink the logo to where I think looks good, and then I'm all done. You can go above and beyond and start doing some different compositing modes, like maybe screening it in there, and then that will make it look a little more realistic or you can even add motion blur or things like that. But that's it. That's how you use the new Mocha Vegas plugin inside Vegas Pro 21. And that wraps it up for this video. If it helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. I'll see you guys in the next one.